Sports. I'm your host, Terry Polis. Thanks for joining us here. As you can see, the man in the middle, Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers, one of the foremost, uh, how should I say, I, I want to say mascot, but you are not the official mascot of the Cubs. You are the unofficial mascot of uh, the Cubs, one of the foremost Chicago Cub fans all around. Ronnie, welcome to the show. Welcome, Terry. Please have. Nice to have me here. I'm a number one Cubs fan all over the universe. That is, you, I would know, that is indisputable, Ronnie, absolutely. And with you is Nick Mantis. Nick is a producer from Northwest Indiana, co-producing a documentary on Wani, Woo, Ronnie Woo, well, I want to say Wani <laughs> Roo Roo. And uh, Nick, you are, uh, you are you, Mike Hoffman. Is, is Paul, Hoffman. Paul Hoffman. Is Paul Hoffman and myself and uh, Scott Davenport. Uh, we pretty much, uh, Paul came into the idea of doing a documentary for Ronnie, uh, his plight of wanting to be the mascot, wanting to sing the uh, seventh inning stretch song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Uh, he just saw the inspiration that Ronnie had for the Cubs and so forth, and somewhere we just started coming up with the idea of we can contribute to Ronnie's plight in any way it would be to do a little documentary and kind of let people know a little bit about the inside of Ronnie Wu, his feelings, his thoughts, his life. And the more we started digging into his story and his life, the more fascinating it became that not only were we dealing with a personality, a person who enjoys going to Cub games and rooting the Cubs on for the last six decades of his life, but basically somebody who at the same time has endured living from Lower Wacker, uh, having nobody there to help him in time of need, and slowly but surely people came up who were television personalities, Cubs baseball players, someone who was tied into baseball one form or another who was a fan of baseball and of Ronnie helping him in one form or another. Right. Now, Ronnie, <coughs> when was the first time you wooed? Now, I, I imagine that you came out of the womb wooing, right? <laughs> okay. Is, am I correct? Did your mother say, what, what is this wooing coming from this Well, kid? Well, really, uh, I was born in 1941 and, and I had a twin. And, uh, on Halloween. On Halloween. Right. And what it was, he was born 10 after 7, 10 to 7. I didn't come in 10 after 7, but when I, my mother went to the hospital, they didn't know that I was a twin. And then right. when I came 20 minutes later, I was so sick, I stayed in the incubator for for six months. Well, they said you were you weighed under three pounds. About three pounds, under right. three pounds. I was real little tiny. I was smaller than this baseball here. You know, well. <laughs> so, so therefore, you know, I had to stay in, that was October, I stayed in to April. You know, I guess it was opening day, something like that. Because, but of a... Uh, you came out on opening, don't say you came out on opening day. I came day. out in April. Uh, it came out in April. This uh, is poetic. Of the uh, hospital, sure. Of, out of uh, the uh, hospital. But April, that's when baseball kicks off, April, spring. You know, so I had no idea. I'm a little tiny, like I said, like this, I had no idea. But then I drink a lot of milk, drink a lot of orange juice, and here I am now, number one Cub fan all over the universe. And Ron, you've had some tough times. So you living on uh, Lower Wacker Drive, homeless for many years, and one time you were sleeping in a garbage dumpster, and one of your friends had to wake you up and say, "The stop that they were they're going to dump the dumpster into the bigger truck," and, you, and that would have been the end of Ronnie Woo. -woo oh right? yeah, that goes back in back in the day when I would just I would leave the ballpark and I would just playing around, going to the ball game. I would get in, just go somewhere and just sleep. And then I just fell asleep and some guy woke, woke me and said, Ronnie, Ronnie's in there, Ronnie's in there. But therefore, you know, it's been a blessing that uh, going to the ball game kept me alive. Coming out here, talking to people, let people know that I had my ups and downs in life, but baseball played a big part of my life, you know. I met you about 10 years ago on the street one time, and I you know I, I bought you a drink. Is it Pepsi or Coke? Because the Reader article said that you were drinking a Coke, and I know from your bio that you're a Pepsi drinker only. So well, you know, I, be I bring a lot of beverages, a lot of drinks, you know. I mean, over six years or 60 years or so, it's been a lot of drinks, in and out. But therefore, you know, I'm 61 years old now, and therefore I want people to know that I'm, uh, baseball did a lot for me. You know, I like to tribble it back to the game, to the people to the organization of people on the streets. You know, I, I come up in the Harvard family with, with my parents and my, my father passed away when I was nine years old and my mother 
come and come, come and go, but my grandmother raised me. She took me to the first baseball game. I saw Jackie Robinson play. Now That's your what, mother kind of neglected you a little bit, right? Yes. And, then, and then your grandma took you under her wing, and she brought you to the you know, first baseball game. And she was a Cub fan, so you became a Cub fan. At that right? time, the Cubs, Emma was a teddy bear. I had this little teddy bear running around, playing with it, just like that. I went to the ball game. She took me to the ball game, and the Cubs, Emma was just, just like a teddy bear. And uh, it fascinated me, just like that. The Cubs, you know, the, and then the teddy bear, just like that. Like, See, that's the problem with the together. Cubs, though. Everybody thinks they're this cute little teddy bear. They need to be this ferocious thing that strikes some fear in the people, you know? That, that's, you know, but, you know, I'm a Cub fan, too. I'm not ripping on the Cubs or anything, but, uh, yeah, they are that cute little lovable loser, man, you know, image that the Cubs have. And, but you have to remember, you know. a lot of people must love them because you have to love somebody before you not like them. So I think you yourself, I think you deep down inside, you love the Cubs because you're thinking about it inside your mind. So everybody, you know, it's just wonderful that uh, the thought, the cub in your mind, and that's beautiful. Of all the, big the, things, the beautiful things you could think about, you thought about the cub, and that's wonderful, you know? So well, I, I think deep down, you love the My cub. feeling about Wrigley Field in general, not, not necessarily the Chicago Cubs, but Wrigley Field is it represents, I mean, it's, it's a museum, first of all, but it represents all that's innocent about sports because there's so much money in the sport nowadays, commercialism and Wall Street, that's the Wall Street part of it. As you can see th throughout the show, you might see that we have signs up on our walls. One says Wall Street, one says Clark Street. Wall Street represents what's wrong with sports and that's the money but money is a great incentive in life I, I, you know it, it, they call it the root of all evil though so there's something bad about money there's something dirty about money and Clark Street rep, represent that's where Wrigley Field is located represents everything that's innocent about sports because Wrigley Field is untouched it's it, it's pure and, and that's what baseball is but it's America's pastime and so you adopting the Chicago Cubs, it almost seems poetic that you are in the history of all mascots, and that's what you're trying to become, the Chicago Cubs mascot, that nobody has ever actually chosen a team and says, and, and over a period of years has strived to fall into that role. You have claimed that for yourself. Well, I, I love baseball. I claim me being a, a fan like I am, a love for the game, you know. I would love to be, I mean, I would love to be the mascot for the Chicago Cubs, you know, because of uh, people coming to Wrigley Field, you can be in a bad mood, good mood, you have fun at the ballpark, you know? And then people say, well, you got a little trouble, come out to the ballpark, bring the kids to the ballpark. It's amazing, you feel good with yourself. If you eat steak every day, and I eat beans and rice, you come to the ballpark, you all have a good time, you know, and you're healthy. You now you're, you're, you've maintained uh, some great health. You're in, in great shape. You haven't put on a lot of weight. Uh, you've been on the streets a lot. It's amazing that you haven't, uh, you know, you haven't fallen into more ill health. Does the wooing help you? you? It helps your breathing, right? Is that is that what it is? Well, it helps me in my mind. You know, I never been to. I mean, a lot of time a doctor said if you go out there and go, it helps you. To bring out the worries, you're upset about something, you think about something, you bring it all out with yourself, you feel good with yourself. Uh, any psychiatrist I read that I uh, would tell you to go out there and just let it out. It, they tell you to talk, bring it out to people, and you can do that. And once you do you feel good with yourself. Oh, certainly singing uh, helps the the soul you know the the vibrations of the vocal cord has a, it translates into every nerve in your body and you might be honest something because you've probably done this is a form of singing that you do with this wooing you've probably done more singing than anybody that I know and look at you you know you're in great health well it's just like you, you go out there and you let it all out and you feel good with yourself you tell yourself I want to come out here and be yourself and don't worry about nothing. But what's gonna be gonna be. People worry about the Cubs in first place in April, where they be in September. You take one day at a time, right. one minute at a time, one hour at a time. <clears throat> like every day is different. You wake up in the morning, see the sun shine in Wrigley Field, come out with yourself, you feel good with yourself. Right. Now Let's, let's talk about the documentary a little bit. Uh, Nick, how did you two come to know each other? How, well, how did my this first, thing uh, come together? Everybody remembers the first time they ran into Ronnie Woo Woo. And mine was when I was in second grade. And he ran right past me wooing. And I must have stood frozen still in, in my tracks. And I just remembered Ronnie, his, everything. And, I, and it just blew me away. 
And ever since then, as a child, every time we played baseball in uh, the parking lot of uh, my elementary school, we basically used to woo uh, as much as we said batter, 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 swing. <laughs> and so I actually thought it was just part of baseball. And, and, uh, and then uh, back a few years back. Uh, you thought every club had a, a wooer? Basically. A guy, a guy they paid a woo to go around and put it that way. <laughs> but um, back in 99, uh, uh, Paul Hoffman, a friend of mine, uh, he knew I was doing video production work. Uh, I produced a couple shows in Northwest Indiana and do some corporate stuff. And he approached me, hey, uh, you think you got some time to maybe do a documentary? I'm like, sure. You know, and when I heard it was Ronnie Wu, without hesitation. And I, Paul, how did Paul meet Ron? Uh, through Lou Stancic, uh, who was a friend of uh, Ronnie's as well. And they all met in, uh, in Wrigleyville in that area. He would have never thought to do it had he not had this personal experience with Ron and know what Ron was all about. I mean, I mean the, the whole thing that, that you're there is a story in itself, and, and yet once you people become get to know you, then there's a whole other story that unravels after that, obviously. And for two, for two and a half years, I followed him with a camera through winter, spring, fall, you name it, summer, during the uh, night games, during the day games. 20, what, 30, 40 years you've been doing this? I'm, I'm oh, about 40 years or so, you know. 40 years? 40. And you haven't missed a game. Uh, no, there was a stretch where you missed a few games, and they, they, you got in the New York Times, they thought maybe you, were, you weren't around any longer, Ron. Everybody was worried about you. As a matter of fact, recently, <laughs> there was an article in the Tribune in August, you disappeared on everybody. Everybody's worried about you. You gotta keep in contact, buddy. That, See, now you are this, this part of the lexicon of Chicago. You're part of the society of, the, of Cubdom. And so you have a responsibility to people now. Do you understand this? I understand that I'm, okay. me, me being myself, and going out to the ballpark, and I want people to know that, uh, Ronnie, when you come to Riga Field, you think about the Cubs, you think about Ronnie Woo Woo, but it's more than that. I mean, I want to do something. I mean, but Breakout came to me one day, he said, Ronnie, you know, you play ball, do something, try to do something for the ball club. Be a spirit, be a spirit. And this was back in 1956 to 57, he told me that, be a spirit. Yeah. That's amazing. And then this before Harry Carey, you know, and I used to talk to Jack all the time. In fact, he was the one that got the bleacher bums on the map. He used to always say, them guys out in the left here, they really know how to go have fun. Brickhouse really wanted to tell, got the story going about the bleacher bums. You know, and therefore they faded away, and I kept the spirit going. Something about Wrigley, what is it? I mean, you, you've got... The, the Black Sox, the, the, I mean, not the Black Sox, but the, the Black Cat running out of the field in 69 and this whole mystique about the curse with the goat, the <laughs> Billy Goat curse. I know you guys were with the Billy Goat before you came here today, by the way, right? <laughs> Stop for a couple drinks. Okay. <laughs> Something to eat. And, uh, and, and then you have Harry Carey, one of the, the legendary broadcasters, Jack Brickhouse. Something about this called the Ivy, the Brick, uh, the, the losing, all the losing. Uh, this club, and now Ronnie Woo Woo, there's so much history and lore involved with this, this club. What is it? We well, see the Cubs never lose, you know. A lot, they, just, they just don't get enough runs, you know. Cubs never lose, okay. It's because they just you, don't win. You can get a lot of, you can come up, be down 10 or nothing, and win. Never leave the ball game. But uh, it's all in time. One day you get to hitting, you get to pitching, you got to get them going together. You know, so it'll come together in year 202. Ronnie's pretty much illustrating what you said about your two walls. Wall Street and Park Street there. What's good and what's bad about this part. We've we got a few clips we're going to show you from the Ryan Woo documentary. I prepared myself to go uh, <laughs> well, there's, uh, the other night, so it was nice to go one, you know, so. I drink a lot of orange juice. There, there's one right there, a little bit. Was, uh, because uh, they, they don't here, know the, the, the definition of it. For those who've never seen and experienced uh, it, what it's like down there. Go out, um, of have course, fun. You're homeless and you're trying to, you know, if you have enough uh, to eat, you have enough freezing to eat. You know, to be no steak. It could yourself. be just and, beans uh, and rice. Live down there for, but you filled up. Winters. And, and the person I eating steak, Johnny B, he, Tim he filled up. Tim so what's the difference? But well, when you out here, made him feel a little wanted. among nature, I may see a dog come, pet a dog. A lot of people just go through their daily chores, the doctor and the lawyer. They don't think about saying hello to a dog or throwing you know, peanut to a squirrel. So somebody got to do that. This guy every year, 110% is convinced that the Cubs are going to win the World Series that year.
the and eternal optimist. That's what they call exactly. the Cub fan. Wait till next year. You got a little saying here too about your wait for uh, to see if the Chicago Cubs will make you their official mascot. And you say every year I hope this will be my year. It sounds a lot like wait till next year, of course. And then there's another saying your grandma used to have, it might not come when you want it, but it's always time when it comes. Now, this sounds like a uh, Mike Brady, wherever you go, there you are. No, no, it's what she meant. If I want the Cubs to win the day, if they don't win the day, there's a time when they're going to win, but they're going to win. But isn't that kind of like a lesson for life, though? It's not always going to be there for you. You have to pick yourself up and move on. Can't, don't dwell on the past. Today's a new day. Do you believe in miracles, yes or no? I believe in miracles, yes. Thank you. I do, too. So that means the Chicago Cubs are going to win. Well, and, you know, Dusty Baker's here. Dusty Baker, big-time manager. He's had the Giants in contention for the last nine, ten years, a whole decade, uh, always on the cusp of making the playoffs, if not making the playoffs. That, that tells you what's the common denominator to, with all those Giants teams was Dusty Baker. He's the man. Players come and go. The manager was there for a decade, and they competed almost every single year. What's he, what, is he going to be able to bring that to the Cubs? Well, Dusty, Dusty, Dusty brings... His, his mind, his wisdom to Wrigley Field, and get the guys talking together, playing together, you know. I'm quite sure he had his lineup what he got planned when he come to spring training and get things going. He got his set plan, what he want to do. So he'd be just fine. I think, I, I think you can look forward in October next year to come be in the World Series. Do you think, would you say that Dustin, well, next year possibly, you've got a great pitching staff. If they pick up a couple free agents that will come just because of Dust, Dusty Baker, including Jeff Kent, the all-star second baseman of the Giants, you've got something happening there. Is, is Are day games going to continue to dog the Cubs? No, day games don't dog the Cubs. That's all in your mind. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. But I believe that whether the sunshine or the nighttime, the Cubs will win. You tell yourself you can't do nothing, you lose out. But you since, you can do since the advent of night baseball, the Cubs have never won the World Series. They went once in 1945 and lost, lost the World Series in 1945. But they have never won the World Series. But you don't ever look back, you look ahead. Right now we're looking ahead for this year. You don't worry about what you did yesterday, what you do now, and go forward. We got Dusty Baker here, we got Sammy Sosa, Kerry Wool, Brian, all the guys. Look out, here comes the Now, cops. you're a man who lived on the streets for a number of years, Ronnie, and you are going to deny the elements. This is what I'm talking about, the sun beating down on the players, not necessarily affecting them that game, but games, even for a night game on the road, having gone through all those days games, it takes its little toll on you. It's a cumulative effect. It all adds up over time. Uh, you don't think that there is any iota of truth whatsoever that the sun is somehow affecting the Cubs. The sun is, is good for everybody and good for the Cubs. So therefore, you don't let that worry you. They're going to play ball this year. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I, I, you. I have exhausted that out of you, and I will pursue that, <clears throat> that, that topic no longer. And if you just joined us, this is Picture the Sports, and we are joined by Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers and Nick Mantis, producer, television producer, co-producing a documentary on the life of Ronnie Woo Woo, a fascinating life. Ronnie, on the streets of Chicago for a number of years, was, a homel was, was homeless, and it's kind of, Kevin, evolved yourself into, str you're striving to become the official mascot of the Chicago Cubs. In recent years, uh, Cubs brass kind of warmed up to you. They let you sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game during the seventh inning stretch at Wrigley Field in uh, October of 2001. Was no, it I say it was May the 24th. No, it wasn't October. Right? No. It wouldn't be October. <laughs> it was what am I saying? <laughs> it was May the 24th. Yeah. See, you're looking ahead. Yeah, I'm looking great, ahead. Great, I'm over back. Day, you know, so <laughs> I feel real good about it, you know. So therefore, uh, we're going to play ball this year now. Me saying take out the ball game, that's something. I mean, I talked to Jack Brickhouse, Harry Carey, and when, I, when John McDonough and, and the Cubs refs gave me the opportunity to say take me out to the ball game, it was just amazing. It was just amazing. Now, now John McDonough, the Cubs uh, director of marketing and yes. broadcast, uh, had some kind words for you in recent years. And in, and in past years, they really shied away from the whole subject. And in recent years, you, you've never have had a record, you've had an outstanding life, clean, you don't drink anymore. This has been, what, more than a decade, you don't, you don't drink at all? No, I don't drink, I drink orange juice. 
Orange juice. Okay. And uh, you were arrested one time for wooing too loud, according to the San Francisco Examiner, no. in the wee hours of the morning. And I love that. This was in Schaumburg. Yes. <laughs> this was in Schaumburg. What happened there, Ron? Well, there This is right in our backyard here. You well, have a chance was, to explain. Well, you know, some, and a person that I was just making my know I was going Sandberg. Oh! Grace. Oh! Selby. Oh! Sosa. Oh! Sammy. Oh! So the oh, Cubs win, and there's some Sox fan. He was a Sox fan. <laughs> you okay with that audio in there, George? I just want to make sure. All right. Okay. There was a Sox fan that gave me a sign. Uh, it was a Sox fan. The, the sign Starting of, a conspiracy theory here. Called a sign of complaint against me, but and it was thrown out of court, and it was no big. Did he say he was a Sox fan? He told me he was a Sox fan. He told you he was a Sox so, fan. Okay. I told me his elevator didn't go to the top. I told him to go to the top. <laughs> so therefore, uh, it was the thing worked out well, and I'm still a Cub fan. I see. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna let nothing. If you say good things or you say bad things, you write good things, you write bad things. The Cubs always be a place in my heart. At least of all the brilliant things in the world you could think about, you think about Ronnie Woo, and that's an honor, and I feel good. Right. And a lot of people are thinking about you more and more nowadays. And, and you know, at the longer something lives, its legend grows. It can't go anywhere but up. And gradually, Ronnie, you are becoming more and more a permanent part of, of the Chicago Cubs, May, perhaps to a point where the Cubs organization can no, no longer deny you as not necessarily a, a, a mascot, but certainly a, a part of their marketing program that they have to start including you in some of these promotions. Well, I feel it's all in time, you know. This year, next year will be the year. You know, I'll probably be back, Scott, before when Dusty got me, Dusty at the Cubs convention, we'll talk about it then. I see. Well, maybe when the Cubs win the World Series, then that, that will be next year. You understand? That's next year. Wait till next year. Well, when the World Series comes, that's next year. Until it comes, there is no next year for the Cubs, of course. Well, right now, I think it's 139 days for opening day, so... Put it on your calendar. You count down the days to opening day? Well, it's 160 hours in a week, so you, you add them up and... Now, you're becoming more than just a local celebrity. You were on the Man Cow show, well, Man Cow, Howard Stern show, nationally syndicated all over the country. Uh, millions of people listening to you. Some people stopped you on the streets of New York and said, Ronnie, woo -woo. they're trying to recruit you to the New York Yankees, right? You didn't let them do that. No, the American League is a Bush League. I'm a Nets League guy. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and uh, San Francisco Examiner, the Boston Globe, of course, with Fenway Park, they can appreciate the uh, the, the finer uh, subtleties of, of sports and, and, uh, and a baseball. What is it about sport that brings us all together? It, it bridges the generation gap? Well, it's, it's just that, uh, you know, baseball brings people together. You know, you come when nine players get on the team, get on the field, and you play, you might be a different nationality or whatever, and you get something in common, the love of the game. It brings a lot of people together. And that's why you come to Wrigley Field, you see the fans, all nationality bring people together. And it's amazing how much baseball has done for a lot of people. And, and to, as one of the articles pointed out about you, sitting next to a CEO of, from some corporation, where else would you get a Ronnie Woo Woo living on the streets, sitting in a seat directly next to uh, the president and chief executive officer of Motorola or some, something like that? You know, so you, you got the, the bridge, baseball and sports, they bridge the generation gap. And you know, you see these people, and I get together with me, your, your, your grandfather and grandson, and they don't have a lot in common, but everybody can commune about the Cubs. Well, like baseball, baseball bring people together, fans together. You could be a custodian, you could be the president of a company. And you don't know when you buy a ticket who you're going to sit next to, and it brings people together. And that's what makes it so good about this. I baseball. mean, whoever thought that you and I would be sitting next to Nick Mantis? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that alone, you know. Or we sitting next to Terry. Sports brought us together. Yeah. yeah. Or, or me. Right? Well, it's, it's like this, Terry. You know, baseball does so much for it. All people all over the universe, you know. And so you could be in a bad mood. You think about baseball, think about a glove. And then you go out there and see the fans, the people. It's amazing how things can get together with baseball. You could be a big executive, could be worried about something, sitting next to a guy who just got a dishwashing job. And he could tell you, don't worry about it, it's okay. You look at him and say, thank you, I remember that. And then you go home, he go to his job, you go back to the dishwashing job, it work out fine. Right. 
And baseball crosses all income levels as well. I mean, you mentioned the generation gap, but you know, you got your poor and your rich and middle class and Ronnie, you know, coming just from just kind of like the players too. You know, you <laughs> the poor and the rich and middle class. Not yeah, much of a middle class. You have to nowadays. define poor, but uh, in those realms. But Ronnie, coming from the South Side, basically baseball um, ignited his uh, spirit for living. And in all honesty, it's true. It's very, very true. I mean. Here's a guy who was bypassed by the public school system. Uh, he couldn't read the chalkboard and the writing that was on there. They thought he was uh, illiterate. They didn't think that he could uh, comprehend or learn. And basically, all he needed was corrective eye lenses, but they held him back a few years. And no one really sat down with Ronnie to see what his problem really was. And by the time he get to, uh, got to high school, they're just like, you know, you're 18 years old. Go get a job. He decided to go ahead and work. Never went to high school. As a matter of fact, on the way here, Ronnie, what were you telling me about what you're going to do? I said, Well, I'm going to take me a GED. I'd like to graduate from high school, you know, and I get things together. I want to graduate from high school because when I, I was in fourth grade, they put me in this room called, at that time, the dummy room. I stayed in. I stayed in fourth grade for three years, and then after I came out of fourth grade for three years, then they started passing me because I was, at that time, old. You know, right, right. And, and I came out of grade school. I was 18 years old, mm. and I didn't see a day in high school. I would love to, to be able to go from class to class and go to geometry, arithmetic, the music, things like that. I missed all that, and right. I cried. I cried like a baby when I couldn't go to high school. Right. They told me to go out at, and get a job. At, at this point in your life. You've, you've, you've got the documentary, you've got the website, RonnieWooWoo.com, and we'll put that up in a little bit so people can get that. And you can get more information about the documentary there on the website and more about Ronnie Woo Woo. It's got a section for fan comments. It's really, a, actually, a nice, nice website. I like it. A lot of information and a lot of insight and, and wisdom about how sports translates to life also. Uh, but you, at this point in your life, you're trying to make a little bit of money to help support your children. You have you have two a stepson I, and a daughter. And a right? daughter, yeah. I have a daughter, stepson eleven. My daughter's eight years old. She's in third grade now. So I like to try to get her education together, things like that, you know. So she won't have to go through what I went through in life, you know. I would like to have a graduate from grade school, see her graduate from high school and go to college, things like that, you know. Right. Wonderful. Well, Ronnie, we, we had a great time having you on the show. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you'd like to add, say to the fans out here? We've got a lot of Cub fans out here in the, in the northwest suburbs. Anything at all about this year, about your life, about uh, being on the streets and being at Wrigley Field and what sports does for people? Well, anything sports does for everybody. People out there, Cub fans out, don't give up. Take one day at a time. It may not come when you want to, but always on time. Cubs win. Cosman, oh, Cosman, oh, Cosman, oh, Baker, oh, Baker, oh, Baker, oh, Cosman, Terry. Oh, oh. All right. Yeah, they, uh, thank you. All right. I appreciate that. Listen, and Nick Mantis, producer, Terry? Northwest My Indiana, pleasure. working co producer uh, of the project. Thanks for your, you guys coming out here and sharing this with us today. I really appreciate that. RonnieWooWoo.com, of course. Um, just, you know, it, it's, it's great, Ronnie. I wish you all the best of luck. And uh, you know, go, go Cubs! Eh? You know, I think it's going to be a good season. I see you at the World Series. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, hopefully I'll have a ticket there, Ron. Uh, in October. <laughs> October. See you at the World Series. CBS. Is there another World Series in January? I don't know. <laughs> CBS. Cub beat Sox. Cub beat Sox. Is that what it stands for? <laughs> All right. 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 Oh, I wanted to ask you about the wooing. Now, is there a proper wooing technique? And we'd like to thank our audience, of course watching Picture of the Sports and please do tune again in again next time right here on this channel and is there a proper is, is it like a, uh, a Whoville you know like the Grinch who Cindy who type, type of who no, I or go, more forceful who you go like Baker oh, Baker oh, Baker oh, Sammy oh, Sosa oh. All right, see, I'm, get, I'm getting a how. I'm getting a how, not a who. I, mean, I don't know if I'm hearing this wrong. Is it it's who and not how, right? Or is it who? Cuffs. Oh, cuffs. Oh. Oh, it's a cuffs. distinctive oh. who, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now do you have a school of who, and are you mentoring someone to take your place? Well, I just, whatever happened, happened.